There he is, too. Small mouth. Good one, too. Now I'm gonna have some trouble. Golly, that fish is fighting. I can't do nothing with him. This is a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> Golly. Okay. That's a good one right here. Wow. There we go. You know, I finally got him. That took a lot of doing right there to land that fish. That's a good one. Wow. We. All right, folks. I'm going to tell you what. That is one beautiful smallmouth right there. That is a long fish right there. Long, lanky, probably a female fish. It just probably just come off bed. And uh, that's what we got her on. Is a Helgramite. A Nico Helgramite. But I have it rigged a little bit different than what I usually do. And I'm going to show you how I rig these Nico Helgramites up. But let's let this fish go. That is a good, good fish, folks. See if we can watch her right there. That's a good fish. I took her out right there on my new reel that I bought. And I want to show this one to you. I'm going to show you my setup. This is the Revo Rocket made by Garcia. And if I'm not mistaken, it has a, six, a 7, 6, and 1 gear ratio, which is real quick. Now, that reel handled that big smallmouth fine. Uh, without too much of a problem. I had a little bit of a problem. Smallmouth in these creeks and small rivers are extremely strong. They're extremely strong. But the type of tackle that I use makes it a lot of fun. Okay, this is, uh, like I said, an excellent reel for this. And I believe it's a 2,000 size reel. I may have mentioned that before. Now, I have this rod rigged up with white braid. This is 10 pound test frost braid, and I have an 8 pound test fluorocarbon leader on it, one of about 10 feet long. Water's real clear, so I'm going to use a longer leader. Now, this is a Nico Helgramite, and what I have in it is a one alt Gamagatsu EWG. That's the, that's the one I prefer. Now, everybody's different, a lot of people don't like it. E, EWGs, but I do. Uh, a size one could possibly work in it. I'm not for sure. Uh, I'll try it, but I've been having a lot of luck with the size one out. Now, this is a three inch bait. Now, I'm using a 1 16th of an ounce bullet weight. If you noticed, if you see that little bit of yellow right here at the head of the bullet weight and at the back side, what it is, I have this bullet weight pegged with a rubber band I'll show you see I can slide it anywhere I want to and it'll stay in position no matter where where I slide it but that time I had it like that you can actually rig it up like a little Carolina rig and a lot of times they'll they'll hit this bait better if you'll do that um, I tell you what red is a great color oftentimes if you have a bait that has a little bit of red metal fleck in it smallmouth love that color but they'll hit other colors too but that's why i selected that particular color and the color is watermelon red fleck i'll just get it out i have several of these right here these this color because it works real well in the water it turns a blue purplish looking color even though it has a lot of water it's a it's a strange deal right here really shows up in in this clear water very good bait and it, this is a three inch bait very good for smallmouth while we're walking back out here i need to mention this uh i'm using a six and a half foot sow belly rod and this is a light action rod one of my favorite rods because of the weight they're the lightest rod that i've found yet folks as far as heavy weight in your hand real light outfit right here and i'm going to show you another thing while we're 
while we're walking because the material that these Nico Helgramites are made of is it's like rubber. It's even a lot more elastic than Elastec uh, that Z-Man uses. Tough, tough baits. But what I do right here, if you notice the eyelet is exposed. So I just barely go in to the front side of that bait. Okay, which this is the bottom of the Helgramite. The eyes is right there on top. By the way, these are very detailed baits. But I just barely, I let the eye be exposed okay because they're so tough then when i run it through i lay the hook in beside here flush the point with the top side of the bait and then you'll automatically see where the entry point is which is right here and run it straight through but i leave the hook point exposed like that laying on top of the bait now you can see how straight that bait is like that. That's very, very important. And I have this pegged, so I'm just gonna run it up there where it barely touches that eyelet, then I'm gonna back off just a little. I wanna leave a little bit of slack right there because what that'll do, it'll give this bait better movement. It'll look more natural. Of course, a Helgramite is a type of bait that you work slow. Uh, when a Helgramite moves from rock to rock, all they do is cut loose and drift to that rock, and they're, they don't move much. But just by the, the shape of this bait and the way it looks, these fish are accustomed to seeing Helgramites, and Helgramites are loved by a smallmouth. In my opinion, much more than crawfish. That's just my opinion. But right there is where we caught this fish. Let's make another cast. I mean, they could be two or three there. Then that may, only, may be on the only fish there. You know, you never know. You never know. But when you do catch a fish out of a shallow river or creek, fish that area. Because they could be several fish there, folks. You know, that could be two or three bites there. Sometimes more is what I'm saying. And if you notice, I'm fishing this bait really slow. Those fish is going to always be laying on the back side of these rocks. And there's some good-sized rocks in here. They'll be on the down current side with their head facing up the current. Now, I'm walking down the current. I'm breaking a row. But I'm gonna do it real. <laughs> I'm gonna be real careful about it. There he is. Another good one. That ain't a bad one right here at all either. Boy, boy. This is a good fish. Let me loosen my drag. I get excited now when I'm fishing for smallmouth. I get excited because they're mean. They're the meanest fish that I know of as far as bass are concerned. You talking about pulling, I can't tell y'all how this fish is pulling. Wow, that's two big ones. Two big ones I've caught. Well, I ain't caught this one yet. Okay. I ain't caught him yet. <laughs> Golly. All right, he'll quit in a minute, folks. Let me see how he's hooked. He's hooked real good. He ain't gonna come off. That's a good one. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fish right here. Look at there. Golly. You talking about fighting. Wow, my, 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 yet another beautiful, beautiful smallmouth. Let's let him go. Ain't that beautiful? Let's check her, check her line right here. Now I've tied a Palomar knot. I'm not worried about my knot. 
not just those two small mouth not on eight pound floor carbon now after i catch another one i'm going to retie but my line is not frayed at all so we're in good shape creeks that have a lot of rocks or or small rivers that have a lot of rocks like this you're better off to just take your time and fish very slow because they could be anywhere there's so many rocks and a lot of times in between those rocks is a is a deep hole so there's no telling where they're going to be so it does take patience to uh, to get bit so just make your mind up to just take your time now in a river like this one or creek i would much rather wade than i had to go down through here with a kayak because with a kayak you're missing a lot of opportunities by going by really really quick that's just the truth of it now that's got to be <laughs> You would think there'd be a fish right there by that tree. Let's cast above it just a little bit. Hey, there's a fish. Oh, me, he's in that tree. And it's a big one, too. We're going to have to go to him, folks. I'm just going to hold pressure the best I can. Doggone it. That's a big one. There he come, he come loose. Now, uh, small mouth. <laughs> no doubt. I knew there was one right there somewhere, set up somewhere around that tree. Wow. Oh my, my beautiful, beautiful fish. Okay. Wow. Look at there. That one's got some red eyes. <laughs> what am I talking about? That fish right there is probably close to 17 and a half inches long. It's a good fish. Good fish. Wow. Let's let him go right here. There he goes. Woo. I, I am, well... Let me put it this way. I investigated it. You know, wondering why, you know, Burst will eat his boogers the way he did, the way he does. Um, it's a vitamin deficiency. There he is. Oh, my goodness. That's a small mouth. That's probably one of those we seen a while ago. Ooh, we I tell you what, yeah, that's a good fish. Look here, folks. God, wait, I can't tell y'all how these fish fight. I mean y'all can see okay, there's one right behind him. And the one behind him ain't quite as big. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, he ain't quite as big. This is the big one. He's close to being as big. Oh, my goodness. What some beautiful, beautiful fish. He's trying to get that Helgramite out of his buddy's face. <laughs> his buddy's saying, look here, man, you don't want no part of that Helgramite. Can't you see how I'm fighting? Trying to get it out of my mouth. This is a big small mouth here. Boy, boy, boy. I tell you what, I enjoy it. Oh, all species of fish, but now creek fishing and river fishing, I'm gonna tell you it's hard to beat, folks. Look here, what a big small mouth. I'm going to show that one to y'all because that's a big fish for a creek. Golly. I guarantee you that's them two that followed that rock bass. 
they wanted to go back to their spot, their hunting spot. Look at that, what a fish. Oh my goodness, what a jaw jaw. Hey man, what a dead blame jaw jaw. That is a darn good one, okay? Hey man, it's a good one. Whoa! Now, folks, look here. Four Creek. I mean, for a small river, that's a big small mouth. Now, that's a female. She's a little bit poor. They just come off bed. But that is a big small mouth. And you're talking about fighting that. Broad tail's what does it. Let's get her back. I'm super excited about this. Super excited. Let's get her back. She don't even need reviving. They are tough in these creeks and rivers. Let's get after her right here. That'll do her more good than anything. That fish right there fought. That fish gave me all I wanted. All I wanted on this type of tackle. But I don't like to fish real heavy. In fact, if it was a little bit lighter tackle, it would suit me fine. It would. If they get off, they get off. I mean, uh, but I give them a sporting chance. And that's sport of fishing. What a blessing to be out here. God made this perfect, did he not? Just like he made you perfect. All right, folks, we made it back. Uh, come on back after I caught five or six small mouth. Really, I caught about seven or eight, but five good ones and some rock bass. But anyhow, uh, I come on back. The current was making me tired. I tell you what, I got to get in shape this summer for this kind of stuff because I simply love creek fishing or small rivers. It's a lot of fun, folks. I want to share with y'all what I think is a great way to not only rig this bait, but other baits similar to it. And I'm going to start by answering a question. I get a lot of questions. What kind of line do you prefer when it comes to braid? Well, uh, I love this Berkeley braid right here. Uh, this is, um, Crystal is the name of it. I talk about it a lot. It's just white. The reason why I use this stuff, it's Berkeley by Nang is what it is. Right there. The reason why I use that color is because I can see it against the water most watercolors perfectly. I'm a line watcher. So I can see that strike. Okay, so the next thing I get asked a lot is what kind of braid do you like? I mean, fluorocarbon do you like? Yozuri, top knot, 100% fluorocarbon line. I've been using this for years and it's good stuff. I, I've landed some big fish with it. And you can buy both of them at Walmart, at your local Walmart. That's what I like about the best about it. Now let's talk a little bit about, you know, I get a lot of questions. What do you mean pegging your bullet weight with a rubber band? Well, there's a 1 16th of an ounce bullet weight. That's the actual bullet weight, uh, lead. But let me say this, I left my tungstens here this morning and I like these a lot better this is a 1 16th of an ounce tungsten and you can maybe you can see maybe I can steady that and y'all can see the difference in the size they're both 1 16th of an ounce if you notice the sled is a lot bigger so tungsten is a lot better in current creeks or river systems it, it um it sinks quicker it just handles better you can jump those rocks a lot better with it let me just put it that way so i like tungsten and it and it makes the bait a little bit smaller of a pro, smaller of a profile but anyway what am i trying to say 
That is my favorite two hooks is what I'm going to show you for a Nico Helgramite, which this is um, the three inch version. Uh, a one alt extra wide gap owner. Okay. Or a one alt Gamagatsu or Gamakatsu, ever how you want to say it. Uh, EWG, both of them's extra wide gaps. Those are the two hooks that I prefer. Now, let's talk about pegging. You can see that that, that weight is free right now. As free as it can be. But I don't want that. I want to keep this bait together. Together as one because we're fishing current. Okay, folks, let's just go ahead and cut us a, a piece of line off about a foot long good enough like that so what I'm gonna do right now is take this rubber band and run and run the line through it just like that see I got it captured even them up right there got it captured right there so I have two ends now what I'm gonna do is take these two ends and stick through the back side of this bullet weight see here right mm -hmm. Just stick them both through there at one time. Just like that. Now, what I'm going to do is just stretch this rubber band just a little bit and pull at the same time. See, it comes right through there without any trouble. So, now the next step, of course, I'm going to take a pair of scissors and we're going to cut both ends off. So I'm going to stretch this a little bit, then cut it flush. The reason why I'm going to do that, flush the back side of the bullet weight, is because it'll draw back up into the bullet weight some. And I'll show you why I do that. So, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and cut this one off. Like that. Now, the reason why I did that is because you notice the eyelet right here is exposed. What I want to do is pull this bullet weight. See, it's concaved. There's a space in there that will sort of hide that eyelet. Just like that. Just like that right there. And that's how I fish it. I want that bait together that way. Now, the reason why I use... These hooks is because they're light wire, and um, I fish with light tackle, so I'm not going to be able to just, I mean, just set the hook with everything I have. If I do, I'm going to pop my line. The light wire hook will penetrate that bass's mouth a lot quicker, a lot better with this light tackle. Let me put it that way you'll get a lot better hook set. And also the reason why I like the rubber band technique, what I've done is I've made my own jig head instead of accepting whatever that's on the shelf. I can use a, a, a 1 16th, a 1 8th, a 3 16th, a quarter, and I can put whatever size hook that I want to in it to suit me for whatever size bait I'm going to be using. Okay. Um, Y'all see what I'm saying? I can create my own jig head by doing this. And another advantage is this rubber band, when it's time to retie a knot after you catch two or three good fish, uh, in this case it was smallmouth, you can just slide that up, cut that knot, and retie you another knot, and slide it back down. Uh, and it won't burn your line. Line burn, you know, by you know, used to in the old days, we, we used to use uh, toothpicks. Toothpicks is a little hard on line. Uh, if, if, if they're put too tight, they can actually burn the line a little bit when you, re, when you need to retie a knot, when you need to slide it back up, you know, and retie a knot. And it could result in a, in a popped line. 
Well, this way it doesn't damage your land. So there's a lot of things you can do. Another advantage is you can slide this bullet weight anywhere you want to and make you a little Carolina rig. Uh, uh, you can use these Nico Helgramites this way. You can get a small hook and nose hook them, just a little small, like a, like a size four um, hook and just barely nose hook it. Hey, and, and use it that way. Instead of crimping a split shot, you can use a bullet weight which is not going to damage your line. I don't like crimping split shots. I do it a lot of times, but I don't like to because if you'll look, it actually damages the, damages your line, which this won't. And you can also, you can adjust it along or short or whatever, uh, you know. A lot of advantages to that. It's an old, old technique, but it, I'm going to say it's second to none. It's not been beat yet. The screw lock deal, <laughs> that is, an, that will not beat that right there. I guarantee you that, that's just my opinion. Well, folks, my main objective on this channel is to help people in a lot of different ways. Not only in fishing, but to accept the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. He is the only way we can get saved. Our only salvation can come through Jesus Christ. God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do for this channel is very much appreciated. Hey, man, woo. I'll, I'll take this line and I'll pull it. And remember, go fishing when you can. Fuck off.